Welcome to the Candle Business Coach Podcast, a show about the craft of candle making and small business. I'm your host, Kirsty Allen, and I'm a candle maker, mum of three, and kindness advocator. Join me as I dive into all things candles and small business and deliver advice and tips to you in episodes every Tuesday and Friday. Are you on the list to get my daily motivation emails? Every day, I'll send you a message that is designed to help keep you focused on taking action toward your goals. Sign up using the link in the show notes. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. Today, we have a very special guest and friend, Michelle, fellow candle maker. Do you want to say hello? Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Very excited. Yeah, of course. I'm just so happy that we could um, make this work today. So if you want to tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and how you got started with candle making. Absolutely. So yeah, my name's Michelle Penner. I live in Adelaide, South Australia, and I own a small candle business called Within the Chaos Candle Co. Um, It's currently my side hustle, but it's growing uh, quite rapidly, which is exciting but also concerning. Um, I work as a lecturer in nursing, so very different to candle making. Um, And I also have two little rat bags uh, who are four and two and another one due in February. So my life is hectic but wonderful. Um, I got started in candle making because it's a creative outlet essentially. I think that's how a lot of people get started from my chats with different candle makers. throughout the years. I actually started about 10 years ago now. Um, I remember going over to a friend's house and I saw her. She's like, oh, yeah, before we go out, I'm just going to quickly pour these candles, you know, so they can set while I'm out. I'm like, what do you mean? You mean you can make these at home? Like, that's so cool. And so I just bought a kit from my local candle supply store and I sort of started making them for presents for my own use at home. Um, people sort of, you know, said, oh, can you just make me some of this fragrance or this fragrance, you know? Um, But it really just started as a creative outlet. Um, I've always been obsessed with candles and fragrance for as long as I can remember. I I was one of those kids that, you know, I would earn some pocket money when I was sort of six or seven years old and I'd love to go to like, you know, cheapest chips or the reject shop or whatever, you know, one of those cheap stores and, and have a look at all those candles. I think back in the 90s, it was those gel candles that were really really cool. Yes, I remember those. <laughs> Still coming back, they're coming back. Um, <laughs> so that's really like where my love of candle making began. And uh, about 12 months ago, I had, you know, quite a few people say to me, I really want some teacher gifts, some educator gifts. Can you make me a special candle? And I said, sure. So I ended up making a batch of about, you know, 50 of these candles, I think. And that's really how my business started taking off. It was more of a demand from my my friends and family group and then I sort of said right if I'm gonna just do this now's the time um and so it's it's sort of taken off from there yeah amazing it's so interesting hearing how different people start their journeys because it always Mm -hmm. begins with an obsession or a passion with loving candles um and all the different types of candles that you can buy to then be able to Mm -hmm. create your own and customize fragrance and different colors if you're using dye it's just yep. yeah it's a such a creative for sure outlet. and i think all types of creative people are attracted to candle making some some go right i really want to see what color or what marbling or you know what glitter effect i can mm-hmm. make some are like oh this fragrance i want to recreate at home and not pay you know a hundred dollars for a candle that i love from the store you know yeah. so all yeah and some love you know the pillar candles the mold candles the wax melts like there's such a broad range and i think it's that real element of creativity and wanting a challenge that really attracts people to candle making. Yeah, absolutely. I would agree 100%. Mm. Um, so when you first started, if you can think back to a decade ago, what was it mm. like for you? <laughs> what was it like for you? Do you remember sort of those initial steps you took? Um, I do. I think what I did, I went to, so uh, that would be my advice for anyone who's looking to get into it, is to buy a kit. Mm. There's so many different suppliers in Australia that will give you a kit and they'll have a few different types of jars, maybe one or two types of wax and different wicks and fragrances. And it's all about getting your hands dirty and trying it. So for me, 10 years ago, that was what I did. I ended up after a few months going to a candle class as well. And I'm really lucky to have um, Adelaide Candle Supplies, oh, sorry, Adelaide Moulding 
um, and casting supplies, I think is their, their official name now, um, just down the road. But there are so many candle classes now too. And, you know, these people that take these classes are such a wealth of knowledge. So I remember asking 50 million questions in that class. They were probably like, oh my God, who is this person? <laughs> um, but I was just so intrigued. And I think, you know, even like thinking about you know, the wax and the fragrance oil and how it binds together and all these little, the the technical elements of it is super interesting. Um, but I, yeah, I think buying that kit was the first real, real step that I took. Um, and then of course, going into the shop and smelling all the different fragrances and thinking, oh my goodness, I want all of these. Yes. I want to burn <laughs> five in each room yeah. in my house. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and get a massive headache. Yep. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> Did you find that um, at the beginning you were feeling overwhelmed by the process or more excited and motivated? A hundred percent. It's so overwhelming, Mm -hmm. even more so now because when I started, I don't think social media was such, didn't, didn't have such a big role in, you know, the information that we consume. So I went on to a couple of websites and I started doing a lot of reading, but now, you know, we're fed TikToks, we're fed reels, we're fed all sorts of things with people saying, this is the way to do it. There's so many different ways. Um, But I think that's why I always say, start with a kit, do some experimenting. First of all, make them for yourself, burn them, burn them, burn them. Um, And you'll get a real sense of what you love, what you don't love, what other people love. Um, And then, you know, also, if you have questions, jump into one of the candle making Facebook groups. There's a million of them, in a, particularly in Australia. Um, and a lot of people are so generous with sharing their knowledge. And if you've got any questions or you don't know where to start, I would say pop it in the, there's a um, question in the group and people will give you, you know, their stories about when they started. From my experience, candle makers love talking about how they started making candles. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That's an exciting part of the journey is to talk about those, um, mm-hmm. the origin of where it all began. And when you do jump into those mm-hmm. Facebook groups and ask questions and get advice, you do find, as you said, they're just a wealth of knowledge and they're so willing to share that knowledge because we're such a, we're a large group of people, but we're a close knit group that want to yeah. help one another, which I don't know Absolutely. if you find in every different industry, but certainly in the mm. candle making industry, it's um, yep. it's incredibly supportive, which is... Yeah, so I mean, I do think it's important to note, though, like taking, you know, people's feedback with a pinch of salt mm. because it's online, there are always people who will not have the best intentions, so don't be put off by that. But, you know, if you're asking for help, for the majority, I found the responses are quite supportive. But yeah. just, I just wanted to, to for people to be aware of that as well. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Because there's competition, like with any market, you know. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. So mm. when you think about running your business, how do you manage to complete all the relevant tasks needing to be done? Because there's so many different oh, things yeah. pulling your attention, <laughs> not only just in life but in business as well. So how do you manage it all? I've, I've got to be honest, I never manage to do everything. Yeah. And I go to bed each night having a long to-do list and that's just mm-hmm. the nature of it. So my first tip would be be okay with not having done everything <laughs> that you want to get done. Um, but I'm very big on time management, particularly having small kids and another job. I block out my time. I use my calendar on my iPhone to really go, right, this hour I'm doing this, the next hour I'm doing this, you know, and by planning your time properly, I feel like you're making the most out of it. And then, you know, putting aside a few hours to experiment and to be creative and say, all right, what new thing do I want to make or what do I want to make for myself? Because I feel like with running a business, the drudgery side of it, which I, I mean, we all hate admin really don't we (laughs) that can really overshadow the creative aspect of it running a business is not all fun and games and selling candles and talking about them Mm. there's a lot of invoicing there's a lot of you know advertising there's a lot of doing paperwork for insurance for markets for you know all these sort of I guess boring tasks so I feel like scheduling things in chunks can really make a difference for me personally yeah yeah definitely I'd say my most used app at the moment is my uh, calendar Mm. just because it makes things a lot easier to know what you've got coming up and when you do have those free time slots available to dedicate to your business absolutely yeah 
And what it, so what I've also decided to do for next year, a lot of people probably have already done this, but I've only just clocked on <laughs> because I've got quite a lot of wholesale clients now and quite a lot of markets and things like that. I've got one of those 12 month calendars, like those big ones that sort of go across the wall. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've written in, okay, so now I'm going to prep this type of candle for this season or um, I have to get ready for this market, you know, weeks in advance because we all know candles take time to cure. So we need to make them in advance or, you know, now is when I'm going to be doing a sale or whatever it is. So I can really be effective with, um, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm scrambling so much. If I've got that plan, I just have to look at the week and know, okay, so now is the time to do such and such Mm. in terms of what I'm making. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that takes a lot of the stress away as well. When you've got a plan that you can follow and when you've got the motivation behind that, then it's easy to actually take action and get things off your to-do list. Um, not in a way that's, um, just ticking things off, but to actually enjoy the process and enjoy the journey along the way as well, which is important. Yeah. So what has been your biggest win in your business? If you could narrow it down to one. Oh, my biggest win. Uh, That's a good question. So I guess I've got a couple of different types of wins. So financially, I think when a client approaches me to be, you know, um, their wholesale supplier of candles for, you know, their shop or whatever, that's amazing. And I've got some beautiful clients um, and friendships that I've made throughout that process. But the biggest win is going to markets and looking at people smell my candles and go, oh, this reminds me of this time or this place or this experience. And it is just glorious. So I think for me, still connecting with my main customer base and talking about fragrance for me that's my biggest win yeah Yeah. and I can tell you've got a lot of passion for what you do which so much which is which is so important to have because when you as you say go through that the admin and the drudgery and all the things that aren't as fun um your passion helps carry you through those moments and days when you're not necessarily focused on the creative aspect so yeah absolutely and I don't know if other people have experienced this but I was quite naive going into starting a business Mm. (laughs) I thought oh yeah like you know I've done hard things before I can do this it's actually yeah it's really hard yeah (laughs) so I think yeah having that passion sort of maintains that that stamina and you know the longevity but you do need to you know make sure you're taking breaks Mm. uh, mental and physical breaks from your business um, and you know take time to connect with your why with your why am I doing this in the first place I think yeah we we need to try and avoid burnout yes absolutely in fact that's one of the podcast episodes that I want to explore in the future is how to manage burnout and how to avoid it as much as possible um just coming back to the markets I love also when people come up and smell the candles and kind of reaffirms that you're on the right path when people um love what you do because you love what you do and you want people to be just as excited so it's nice that they um you get that instant feedback when you do go to the markets yeah yeah absolutely and I like I love doing markets in my local areas Mm. because you know I am restrained with how far I can travel um because of my kids and um, my other responsibilities but that's for me that's my customer base and I think knowing your customer base is key and you know a lot of people start a, a a business and say, why am I not getting online sales? You need to put yourself in front of your customer. It's rewarding for you. It's rewarding for the customer. You you know, you'll get repeat business. People want to know the story behind the candles. Mm-hmm. People are really invested at the moment with putting their money, spending their money on products that are locally made too, particularly post COVID. So I think yeah, markets are a really big, really big part of what I do. And especially this time of year coming into the warmer weather, um, there's more opportunities to get into different markets in different areas, mm-hmm. which is huge. Um, certainly yeah. it's a bit more tricky in the colder months, but then if you build up that customer base um, in person during the warmer months, then, you know, six months later when things get a bit colder, people are still wanting to purchase candles and they'll think of Absolutely. you and your business because they've met you before they know the quality is excellent um, and they love the range of fragrances as well. So that's important Absolutely. Too. And I think also realising that, you know, sales aren't going to be consistent all year round winter. Well, and, you know, the couple of months after the holiday season, they're particularly slow for candle sales as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, there's lots of ways you can troubleshoot that as well. And, you know, sometimes you might have to diversify what you're offering and or, you know, um, 
offer, you know, a winter fragrance or whatever it is, but there's there's always ideas out there. But I just think the expectations need to be realistic going into it yeah. as well. And especially from the start, I think a lot of us think that when we first begin a venture, because we're so passionate and excited about it that everyone else around us will be will be the same like our Mm -hmm. friends and family of course will support us um, but they won't necessarily purchase from us straight away so you do need to be mindful that things take time to build and businesses take time to grow Um, and you're in it for the long haul it's not it's not a short-term fix to any money and I think yeah, I think that's part of like where the, the challenging mental load of running a business comes into it because you do have all those things to think about. You do have, you know, do I advertise with like an influencer on Instagram? Do I do paid advertising? Like what what am I going to be doing in terms of strategy to, to make this sustainable long term? Um, and I think, you know, like most small businesses will fail in the first three to five years, I think they say. Yeah. So I think, you know, it is an, it is a financial, emotional and physical investment mm. at the end of the day. Um, but there are ways that you can mitigate that risk and also, yeah, I think it's all about being realistic, to be honest with you. Yeah. yeah. When I started, I thought, right, I've saved up X amount of dollars. I'm going to put that into my business. And if I lose that, I'm okay with it. Yeah. You know, I wasn't expecting to make a fortune overnight. Candle making is expensive, particularly in terms of insurance and the amount of testing that goes into it. People don't realise, you know, the amount of testing that goes into every fragrance, wax and wick combination that we have, you know. (laughs) So I think think it is a, a financial investment that can be quite significant straight up, but you know, that's where I always say to people, you know, limit the fragrances that you offer to sort of three to five to start with and see how you go. Come up with a different idea. What can you offer your customers that no one else is offering them? What solution do you have? You know, people want that. They don't just want a candle. They could go to Kmart and buy a candle. But what are you offering that is different for people? Yes, definitely. And that's the thing. Like when um, people make candles to sell, the price point is very different to say like a Kmart or a Target candle. So as you said, you you need to have something that sort of sets you apart and that personal story, something unique about your business, something um, Mm. unique about the fragrances or the wicks or the wax that you're offering um, will help set you apart, which is really important too. Yeah, absolutely. So what would you say has been your biggest challenge during this time? Um, Do you know what? Balancing work and candle making Mm. (laughs) has been my biggest challenge, which I think... A lot of people experience because, you know, some people are pr- privileged enough to do this full time um, from the start, but that's not the case for most people um, from what I've heard anecdotally. So I think managing all my responsibilities um, as a busy professional and, yeah, candle making. I mean, they're, they're, let me tell you how many late nights and that there, there still are late nights. And I'm, I'm luckily enough to be modestly successful at this point. Um, I'm not going to say that it was a get rich quick thing overnight. No, not, not at all. I mean, I've just broken even, to be honest with you. But I think the amount of yeah time and energy that's gone into it um, has been the biggest challenge. But yeah, I'm committed to it and I love it. It's so great. I have had to make some compromises in terms of, you know, the time that I spend with my husband, um, the time that I like I want to sit in the bath and watch Netflix that has been sacrificed a bit and that is my favorite thing to do ever (laughs) Um, but I think (laughs) but I think um it's it's been worth it but there's definitely been sacrifices and being okay with that has been a real challenge yeah yeah definitely I think our mindset plays such a huge part in the success of whether we keep progressing with our business or not there's so many hurdles that we overcome or that are faced with along our journey and if you put in the effort and you work on the personal development side of things as well, it makes Mm. the whole process a little bit easier rather than trying to navigate business and candle making and a mindset that's trying to stop you at every corner. So being able to work through that and talk to other people as well has been a huge help for me too. Yeah, actually, that's a really good point. Connecting with other small business owners. It doesn't have to be a candle maker, but, you know, um, I have a really good friend who makes clay earrings and we often chat. Um, But, yeah, I think an important point is also that, that feeling of imposter syndrome. That has been a challenge for me too. So, yeah, as we were talking about challenges, I was like, you know what? The self-confidence, that's been a massive issue. And 
why am I doing this? Does anyone like these candles? If I have, if I don't make a sale for a couple of weeks, I'm like, oh my goodness, you know? So I think there's a lot of worry, a lot of, yeah, self-confidence issues. Um, so I think having some resources and ways to overcome that is important as well and planning for that because we were all going to feel that at some point. Yes, and I think probably, you, well, you'd think that you'd feel it most at the start, but it's really not the case. It's every time you reach a new no. level in your business, every time you reach a new yeah. level in your life, there's something else in your mind trying to stop you and keep you safe and keep you where you are when deep yep. down you know you want to go further, you want to explore more, you want to keep extending your passion, but your mind tries to stop you which is incredibly yeah, frustrating. So true. Yeah. What I've, what I've done as one way to overcome that is to keep like a file of um, feedback. So mm-hmm. from customers, from market people, uh, people sorry, customers that I've met at a, at a market, um, from my wholesalers. So I've kept like, you know, screenshots of like messages I've received or Instagram comments or things like that. And I do go back through them um, when I'm feeling, you know, a bit low or a bit down or there's been, you know, a challenge that's that's come up for me. And I think that can be quite, quite um yeah, quite positive in terms of the mindset. But um, as you said before, also knowing who your people are, who can you go to that will boost you up? What other women or men are around you that are going to actually say, you've got this, keep going, we love what you do? Yeah, who's your tribe? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and if you don't have those people around you, you will be able to find them in, say, like the candle making groups. You will connect in with a few that you know have got a genuine heart and are looking out for you and wanting to be supportive of you. You know, send them a DM, connect in with them, um, let them know that you're going through some struggles and I'm sure they'll be able to help you, yeah. um, you know, give you a little boost when you need and you'll be able to do the same mm-hmm. for others as well. So, yeah, definitely find That's your true. tribe. Definitely. I was talking to a, um, a business coach on Instagram recently as well and she goes, do you know what you need to do today? You need to put five positive comments on other crafts people's posts. So do, go and do that. Who are the five people that you admire? Go and say something positive about one of their posts or about the work that they're doing. And I tell you what, it comes back around. Amazing. It really comes back around. That's yeah. a really good tip, actually. I love that. Mm. I feel like we get stuck in our own candle making bubble quite yeah, a lot. That's <laughs> relatable. <laughs> Um, so I'm curious, um, can you explain to us how you came up with the name of your candle business? Oh, yes. Um, well, I wanted to call it Chaos Candle Co., but that was already taken. So within the chaos, I guess it's the concept around my life is hectic. My house is usually messy. <laughs> um, there's usually lots of noise going on. Um, and for me, before I started making candles, lighting a candle was a way to sort of have a little bit of escapism, a little bit of mindfulness during the day so I would light a candle while I was making dinner or you know even like chucking the kids in the bath or whatever it was and it's really I love the warmth of the flame and I love that fragrance that sort of fills the room and for me that was like all right it's all good this is a little bit of a calm moment it's something that will take my mind off of you know yeah get get out of my own head as well a bit too it's like you're thriving within the chaos of your own life absolutely Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> so um, for all the listeners that are considering starting a candle business, why should someone begin this journey, do you think? I think if you have a chance to do what you love and get paid for it, I think you should go for it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that, you know, we need more people that are going to follow their passion and put out a really good quality product. And um, if you're committed to that, I think, you know, you can make it work for sure. Mm-hmm. Um I also think, though, it doesn't necessarily have to be a business in the full-time income sense of the the term. I think it can be a side hustle and it's really good to diversify your income too. We all know this after having gone through, you know, the pandemic as well. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think that life's too short to do something that you don't love and if you can do candle making and make make some money in some small sense of, you know, of that, then that's a wonderful thing to do. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. What yeah. do you wish you knew when you first started? Like something that you know now that would have been really handy to know 10 years ago. Oh, my God. I wish I knew that the type of wick sticker that you get is really important. <laughs> <laughs> so specific. I, I love it. <laughs> and, like, I also think this 
make sense to probably everyone but me. <laughs> but buying something to try first instead of buying a great amount of it is really important. <laughs> For a financial point of view and also the yeah. stress it can cause. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, we, the stickums is really important. And, yeah, just, just testing things and asking for samples as well before you commit to, to buying a lot of them, even though it might take a little bit longer, um, is a really smart thing to do. That probably sounds so obvious. No, no. I think... I've made some mistakes in my time. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll deep dive into that in just a moment. Yeah, <laughs> yes, that's right. Just that's for our therapy session. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, it's true because you get so excited and you think, well, if I buy bulk to begin with, I'm going to save money over the long term. But then you end up, you might end up with a, a wax that you don't enjoy working with or a fragrance that you personally mm. don't like the smell of. And you need to yeah. at least enjoy the smell when you're making the candles because your house is going to smell like a combination of all of them. So, yeah, I love <laughs> the idea of, you know, starting off with a kit, starting with a few different items rather than going mm. really big, really fast, um, because you've got time. There's no rush. Yeah. Like you will get Absolutely. there. Just enjoy the process and take a breath yep. before you click buy. Yeah. Yeah. And often reaching out to the companies and saying, look, I would love to commit to these jars for my main line or whatever, you know, whatever type of vessel that you've been looking at, but I'm not sure can I, you know, like, can I get my money back on shipping if I do have a big, pe like, mm. so having these discussions with the company is really important as well. Yeah. And just, I, I just, yeah, because I personally hate paying for shipping as do we all, mm -hmm. particularly for like one item. But look, if you're putting money into it up front, it will come back and you'll say, yeah, I'm really happy with the quality of these. I'm really happy to commit to buying a large amount. Yes. Um, yeah. If that's the, the way that your business is going, then I think that's, yeah. It's a good idea to, to test, 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 test. Yeah. Oh, it goes without saying that testing is essential mm. to make the most yeah. um, safest candle that you can, that people are going to love and want to keep purchasing from you. Yeah. So when you first started, can you think of any challenges? I mean, we touched on this before with the mindset, but were there any other challenges that you had to overcome when you first started? Um, oh, I think... How do you set up for a market? Hmm. Like, where do you even start with that? Okay, cool. My local um, community centre is doing a market. I want to sign up. Yep, they've offered me a spot. All right. So what now? What do I do? Hmm. That was really challenging for me. Um, I think, you know, do you invest in a big gazebo tent? Do you invest in, like, what type of trestle tables do you buy? Um, I think that's really – that was really tough for me hmm. as well. Um, I had – you know, the candle's ready, I had my product ready, but how do you even, like, how do I get there? Like, what, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, how do I pack the car? Like, what do I put my candles in to take them to the market? Yes. So I think the logistics of markets was really intimidating for me mm -hmm. as well. Um, and then, you know, once I got to my first market, oh, man, I was shaking. Oh, I was no. so nervous. Yeah. yeah. And I'm actually, like, I, I do a lot of public speaking. I'm quite good at presenting because of my lecturing job. But this was very personal yeah. to me. So it felt very intimidating. Yes. But um, I think looking at Pinterest for different types of setups or asking on one of the Facebook groups, can you send me photos of, um, you know, your market setup? What, you know, do you, where do you get your signs from? What do you think is essential? Mm -hmm. um, so that, that those type of questions um, are really handy as well. Yes, but, definitely. Yeah. And it's good to know yeah. that, again, with all aspects of um, candle making business, is that you don't have to have everything to start with. Like you can work yeah. your way up to getting a banner that goes with the market store. You could work your way up to getting a gazebo if that's outside your budget to begin with. Fingers crossed the weather's Absolutely. okay. That's one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, again, just try not to get overwhelmed by the process. Mm. Just try and enjoy the journey. Yeah. And do as much research as you can, but also don't do so much that you – are overwhelming yourself which i think is too yeah. easy to do because we want to have as much well we feel like we want as much information and be armed with as much knowledge as possible but then it can also mm. cause it can almost cause like analysis paralysis where we yeah. don't make any choice or don't make any action because it's just oh it's just too much it's too, too hard I'll, I'll skip this market i'll do the next one um rather than you know just giving it a go and um, fighting through that fear if you are nervous and feeling afraid. Yeah. And I think, you know, if you walk through any market, you'll see there are people right from the start of their journey to people that have been doing it for years and years and years. And everyone's got a different type of setup. Everyone's got a different aesthetic. It's what it feels right for you in the moment. And I started with a table that I borrowed from my mum. I rented a gazebo from the market people because we had to have that at this particular market. I had 
what did I have? An old tablecloth as a, you know, cover. I bought a little sign from Kmart and wrote the prices on it. Like, you know, you can do anything. Like, yeah. you can do it on a shoestring as well if yes. that's where you're at too. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look perfect. Yeah. Just, as you said, do feel do what feels right for you in the moment. And as you learn more, you can get better at what you do. And the more experiences you have, yep. the more easier it will become as well. And it's like anything. We look back and go, oh, I can't believe, you know, I wrote like that 10 years ago or I can't believe that that t- I made that type of – like it's, you know, it, yeah. We, we look at how far we've come. Oh, we yeah. all do that. But you've got to start somewhere and you've got to get out there. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. When you start your candle business, there are so many things to consider and research along the way, especially when it comes to choosing the right suppliers. Long Story Short provides all your design and printing needs from your logo and branding to designing and printing your product labels. The quality is exceptional, the customer service is amazing, and prices are very reasonable. They are the only label company I recommend, so check out their website or send them an email today to get started. Hello at longstoryshortdesign.com.au So what do you think is a common myth about making candles? Oh, I think that it will make you rich quick. Yes. Everyone loves candles. Everyone has them in their houses. <laughs> they can buy my candles, right? Yeah. And I'll be a millionaire overnight. Yes. Surely. Especially Surely. when you see influencers <laughs> or you read articles where people yes. have made a lot of money really fast, you think, well, yeah, mm-hmm. well, of course, because it's easy. I know. Like yeah. that kid that made like, was it a face mask or something in their garage, a 12-year-old, and I don't know, probably butchering that story. <laughs> and then they, were, they made like $4 million or something. Yeah. And I was like... <laughs> Oh, my goodness. But, yeah. yes, that would be, the, I think, um, yeah, a very common myth. It takes and time to It's build. a shock. <laughs> yes. And as um, as we spoke about earlier, like there is that initial investment in buying supplies and then testing those supplies before you're happy with mm-hmm. the candle that you can then sell. Um, yeah. And that, that takes time and money. So, yeah, definitely not a, yeah. a get-quick, get-rich-quick scheme. Quick scheme, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and my, my thoughts are I would never go... I want to own my own business and run my own business. What do I do? Let's make candles. It doesn't, I don't think personally that's the best way to do it. I think if you've got an interest in candles and you want to make candles that go for it that way. But I don't think that you can create a successful business, um, you know, the other way around. It has to come from the passion, from wanting to learn, from wanting to know every single thing about, you know, making candles. Yeah, definitely. It almost becomes like this, beautiful obsession where you just fall Mm. in love with the process and the craft and want to know everything that you could possibly learn about it because it brings you so much joy yeah yeah um so what would you say is the most important strength someone might need to become a successful candle maker i think to be okay at failing Mm. and that's not something that comes easy by any means but i think knowing that candle making and your business is not who you are you know, if your business fails or you fail at a certain aspect of your business, that's okay. Mm-hmm. That's how we learn. We need to fail to learn. So I think being okay with that and putting, leaving your ego at the door, putting the humility aside and going, right, you know what, that's okay. How can I do it better next time? How can I overcome this? Mm. Um, because we all fail, you know, m- most of us in everyday life. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that's really important to be okay with that. Yeah, definitely. So if you could wave a magic wand and change one thing about our industry, what would it be? Uh, Wave a magic wand and change one thing. Mm -hmm. I would love it if everyone would share everything about like their supplies and things like that. That would be great. I think there's um, so much professional jealousy, but I totally understand why, Mm -hmm. because it takes us so much time and energy to, to try different suppliers and different you know, all these different combinations of, um, of consumables that we need to do. But sometimes I feel like people are quite protective and I'm like, oh, you made that. That is so cool. I want to know how to make that. Not because I want to sell it, but because I'm so interested. Yeah. So I feel like we're a bit more open as a community. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's a good point because especially going through COVID, not just, well, not just candle making supplies, but there was a shortage of everything. So there's a lot of yeah. um, fear and the scarcity mindset that if I share my information, my the keys to my success in my business with someone mm-hmm. else, then I'll miss out, there's, that, that there's not enough for both of us or not enough for all of yeah. us, when really there is. I mean, there's literally billions of people on the planet 
everyone's got their own little niche. Everyone's got their own target market and area that they live in. Like, for example, you're in Adelaide and I'm in Melbourne. The chances Mm -hmm. of us coming across local customers and being the same person is very slim. So sharing information about where you get supplies or how you've created something, I think just benefits the industry in general rather Mm -hmm. than you missing out on getting that sale. It's sort of taking this. And I really think there's no such thing as a new idea anymore. Yeah, true. Everything's been done. So (laughs) the chances are is, you know, an idea that I had, I might have seen a few years ago or I might have been thinking about because I saw it in a show. You know what I mean? Like these these ideas sort of, yeah, they're developed and I don't think that they're they're new by any means. Um, Yeah, so I think I'm really passionate about sharing information and helping other people with making candles, um, which is why I actually, why I do candle parties. Um, and I think oh, if one of these people can go on to have this passion or have that creative outlet, which we know can be so beneficial, mm. then that's awesome. Yeah, so, yeah. definitely. Mm. Um, so I know that you're a mum of two. You work as well as doing candle making. Would you say that you've got a weekly routine where you can sort of fit in the candle mm. making? How do you, yeah, how do you manage I do. that? Um, so I tend to structure my days, um, I sort of do two to three hours a day minimum on my business mm-hmm. um, and I tend to do that while the kids are asleep, to be honest with yeah. you. <laughs> I try and um, have weekends off um, and I'll tend to get my most orders online coming over a weekend. So I'll usually spend Monday packing orders um, and you know updating my website if that's what's needed. Um, and then I have um, big wholesale orders that come in too. And that can be quite a process in terms of ordering quite large amounts of vessels um, and supplies for that and communicating with the client to make sure, you know, it's what they want, get their account labels and that type of thing. Um, so I feel like the start of my week tends to be more about the admin side of it. And then I'll have specific days where I do pour candles. So I'll say, right, today I'm going to make 100 of this scent or I'm going to do this wholesale order um, but at the moment, I'm actually finding it quite challenging to do everything, um, particularly because I've got some big markets coming up. And so finding time to um, create products and prep for the markets is hard. Um, but what I like to do is set up um, my market table in my I've got I'm very lucky, very lucky to have a candle making space. Um, so I set up my table and then I, you know, fill it and take sort of those products to the market. So I know that they're sort of separate from my normal stock, if that makes sense. Yeah. So for me, sort of separating things into the tasks that I've got um, on particular days, yeah, really works well. Do you find that that's an easy way to prioritise your day to day as well? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I think so. I do um, like to be very clear about my lead times as well mm. with my clients. Mm-hmm. Um, but I find that, you know, if I pour one order, they'll be curing while I sort of do another one. Like, so it's sort of like a rolling process, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think, yeah, I totally relate because I've been doing this for a little while too. So, but for mm. the new um, candle makers that are listening, I think knowing that there is a bit of downtime between different tasks mm. and being able to yeah. work as efficiently and effectively as possible is something that you just need mm. to figure out as you go along, especially if you, yep. if you don't have a space dedicated to candle making. Um, if yep. you've got an area that you can pour the candles, let them cure or sit and set for as long as they need, then it's a little bit easier than if you have to shift things around. And, you know, if you've got young yep. kids as well, it can be a little bit tricky. But once you figure it out, then you can just, mm. yeah, you can roll with it, which is really good. I only have had this space recently so I was using a wall of my bedroom and I bought what should I get like shelves from Bunnings and I would actually put them on a higher shelf stand on a ladder and pour them on the shelf wow and I wouldn't have to move them after they were poured they would set they'd be out of the way of the kids I could leave them till the next day and then I would like trim the wick pop the labels on like that type of thing pack them for the customer um so I think there are ways yeah you can get around that as well yeah you make it work um I yeah, you make it work exactly. Whatever space you've got, sometimes you don't even need a space. I mean, I didn't, when I was just making them for me, I would just line them up on the kitchen bench and, and make them, pour them, enjoy them, you know, yeah. do it that way. So you can sort of make anything work. Um, I think also some people ask, do you make candles to order or do you sort of make them in batches? And I think that's a really good question because. Um, the curing time is often, you know, one to two weeks, sometimes longer. It all depends on what type of wax you use. Um, But I think for me, 
having the batch sort of system really works well. So if I make, you know, four or five batches of different fragrances, pop them up on my website, that for me is good because it's locked away in my mind. Those ones are for my customers online. Yeah, no worries. Um, and when I do markets, I put my website on hold during that time and then update my stock later on. So it doesn't sort of get confused and um, and messed around in terms of the quantities I've got available because yeah. that can be really, really overwhelming when you're dealing with, you know, large amounts of candles or even just a variety of fragrances. Mm. I think stock management can be really confusing. So I'm very much about the small batch uh, option. I also think you don't necessarily need a website to do it that way. You can advertise on socials or in, you know, a Facebook group or whoever, however you choose to do it, even via text message if you've got like a, a group of friends and family that like buying for you or, you know, whatever it is. Um, and I've got some friends that own small businesses that do it that way too. So I think, yeah, you find a way, you find a way, but you don't need to do it all, all at once. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you don't have to have the full, uh, like full-time business set up from the beginning you will grow exactly. with your business as your business grows oh i didn't have a website for a long time i just started out doing markets yeah. and went from there perfect and if yeah. people yep. become if you become known for going to markets then then mm. they'll they'll purchase from you from there yeah. rather than um only online because it's as ironic as it is like we have a a product that you need to smell but if we're selling online, mm. you've got to be really yes. good at writing your descriptions and include the notes and the details about the fragrance. Mm-hmm. Because oh, if you make absolutely. if you make single scent candles like a vanilla or a coffee or something that's that people just know the scent of, then that's that's easy for them to purchase. They know that they're going to like it. But if you're making custom blends, which is one way that you can express your creativity, explaining what the smell, what the uh, fragrance smells like can be a bit tricky but when you do markets it's a lot easier because you've got your customers in person. yeah and this is why i always say you need to get yourself and your candles in front of people yeah. however you do that whether you do a pop-up at your local shops or if you live on a main road do a pop-up in your front yard whatever it is however you choose to do it you need to get that in front of people yeah, yeah. and i do think that blending your own fragrances can be quite overwhelming but it is the way to have a point of difference in a saturated market yes because yeah. most candle makers sell a vanilla fragrance. Most candle makers will mm-hmm. sell um, the common sense. But if you can, yeah, as you say, make something that's yeah. a bit more unique and make you stand mm-hmm. out, then people will remember you for that and want to purchase through you and hopefully become a repeat loyal customer. Absolutely. So I've got a very hard question to ask. Oh. <laughs> what is your oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> What is your favourite thing about what you do? I think that the opportunities and the options are endless Mm. and I love having this whole world of possibility um out there that would be my yeah I I just love I'm in control I can choose what direction to take this if I stop enjoying it it's okay I can stop (laughs) but if I want to explore you know other oh there's so many things isn't there like I've just gotten into making sort of you know these beautiful mold candles and they can be all different colors and all this it's just it's just fun it's so fun it is yeah Yeah, definitely (laughs) but yeah definitely the control is just wonderful yes and having that freedom I think there's not a lot of businesses that you have as much freedom with the creativity exactly yeah and I'm really self-motivated my friends think I'm crazy because I'm always very busy, but I love being busy and challenged. I really thrive on that. And I've rarely found a job that offers me that, to be honest with you. Mm. So I love being in control and being able to, yeah, to, I guess, push it or pull back when I want yeah, to. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the benefit of running your own business is that you can decide mm. how big you want to grow it, um, how wide you want to grow it and essentially how quick you can grow it as well because if you put more effort in then you'll get returns mm. faster not yep. not get rich quick but it'll come back a little bit quicker rather yeah. than if you were to go at a slower pace which just makes sense yeah i also love trying new techniques and sharing whether they worked or not like that's mm. one of my favorite things to do is i recently saw a video by um <laughs> luxury candle supplies where they were making a big wholesale order so they instead of using wick holders they waited till the wax was wax was semi-set and then pulled the wick up and then used a heat gun to sort of smooth out the top. And I did a video and put it on Instagram and looked like the feedback was so interesting. It started some really interesting discussions. So I think the trial and error and looking for ways to be more efficient or, you know, yeah, yeah, all that sort of thing. That's really fun. Yeah, really fun. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Do you yeah. think there are any common myths about running a small business? Uh, I think probably that you'll have more time <laughs> yeah. is a myth, but I don't know. I think because of like the rise of social media and especially TikTok, we're all quite, I guess, aware of what it takes to run a small business. Um, and a lot of the tools that we need are now really accessible. So, you know, it's easy to sort of keep track of things and like even Canva and things like that have been just brilliant. But yeah, I'm not sure about myths, probably probably the time thing to be yeah. honest. Yeah, yeah I think you go into it <laughs> wanting more time to turn that mm. side hustle into your full-time gig, control your hours. But there is yeah. a lot of work and effort that goes into that to then get that end goal. Um, yeah, not I think people that. often think it's less work for more money, whereas it's the opposite. Yes. Unless you're one of like, you know, the 1%. Like, yeah, <laughs> like that 12-year-old yeah. kid who... Yeah, like that 12-year-old Karen. kid yeah. who does not need $4 million. Like <laughs> I know, share it with us candle makers. I know, that's oh, right. Too funny. Um, what's one lesson your journey has taught you that you think everyone should learn at some point? Oh, patience, mm. for sure. Mm. It's got to be patience. Patience in trial and error patience in waiting for candles to set so you can test them which i know <laughs> is the most frustrating thing ever yes everyone always talks about that i just want to try it now um yeah patience waiting for things to grow waiting for orders to come in i think you need to be patient mm, absolutely yeah, I would. which i'm not good at yeah but you're getting <laughs> Still better. Not good at. getting better <laughs> getting better yeah, absolutely better than you were say five years ago Hopefully. Exactly. Yes. Uh, what yeah. gives you motivation to keep going when things inevitably get tough? Um, I think I I just love what I do, number one, but it's not the only thing that I do. And I think that it's good to have a few different things to swap between because we can't put all of our effort into one thing and be, like, be happy with that for the rest of our lives. So, I mean, generally we all have – a few different things going on in life, whether it's a hobby, whether it's family, whether it's, you know, your kids, whether it's another job, whether whatever it is, your dog, your cat. Um, and so I think having breaks um, and switching that focus is really good to refresh yourself and sometimes look at things from a new perspective, particularly in a tough moment. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you have any favourite productivity hacks? How can we get more done quicker? <laughs> I think, do you know what? <laughs> My friends are going to laugh if they can listen to this, but naps, have a nap. Yes. Have a nap in the middle of the day. <laughs> oh, I am a napper from way back. And honestly, having like a 20 or 30 minute nap can really just give you a new lease on the afternoon, like, and you can get a lot more done. So Yep, look, love a nap. That would be my productivity hack. No, it's not a hack. No, I love people that. Be doing it forever. <laughs> no, I love that because it. I came up with that, so just so you know. Yes, absolutely. Like... <laughs> I, I own the nap because you told me to. Exactly. <laughs> Do you have any networking methods that have worked for you? Um, I think don't be afraid to reach out and message people on Instagram, Facebook, or even an email. Um, and that doesn't have to be asking for something, but I think if you say oh, hi, I'm such and such. I love your work. Um, I just want you to know I've been following your journey and I really appreciate that you shared blah, 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 whatever it is. I think reaching out to people and, you know, giving them that feedback or just connecting can lead the way quite well to future opportunities to connect, to collaborate, whatever it may be, if you've got a question in the future. So I think don't be afraid to message someone. They can ignore it. If that's what they want to do, they can delete the email. But I think if you take that first step, it can be really beneficial in the future. Yes, yeah. especially when it's it comes from a place of um, like being genuine, and it's not yeah. you know, oh, I'm going to message them because I hope to get something out of it. Like it's you yeah. message it because it's it's true what you feel and what you're saying in that message, and that it's definitely so comes across. The energy that you express is received, and. Yeah. Um, if it's coming from a place of love and it's coming from a place from your heart, then it's it'll come back to you. you yeah. And I have a few other candle makers in Adelaide, and Adelaide is like a big country town, to be honest with you. <laughs> and we often chat and I often comment and say, oh, my goodness, that order looks so great or, you know, and it's just lovely. Like there doesn't have to be this professional jealousy that we think we all need to have. Yes. So. I think they're the people that understand what you're going through. So why wouldn't we connect with them, you know? Yeah, absolutely. They're not going to. 
that well it's unlikely they'll pinch your ideas they're doing their own thing they think their own way they've got their own methods and creativity yes. you know but I definitely think sharing um and yeah reaching out to people just do it yeah I agree why not totally <laughs> how do you define success um success for me in this candle making business is probably to not get sick of it (laughs) and to not get overwhelmed by the business side of things and to keep loving it because I do love it I would like to have you know some sort of reasonable income from it eventually Um, and then if I can actually just love what I do and get a bit of money to pay the mortgage then that is my dream yeah I think that's (laughs) it's such a humble way of looking at life but it's so like it's it's realistic it's doable and yeah, it's um I think so for you I, and your family. I don't have those goals to be in I don't want to be like you know the top candle company in Australia or I don't want to be in Maya or David Jones and that type of thing and if some people want to that's absolutely fine but I just love sort of you know working on on my thing and yeah if I can make some money from it to support my family then that's the dream yeah, for me really oh, I yeah. love that do you have any um, any tools, like anything online or physical that are indispensable when it comes to running your business, like any software programs or anything that you use? I love Canva. I mean, that's how I design my labels and how I know a lot of people do that. I actually bought the Canva Pro membership because it gives me access to all the features of Canva. There's heaps that I don't even use as well. Like you can even do website stuff through them now. And they've got heaps of free online courses about how to use all the tools that it offers. So for me, that was a really, really useful investment. Um, Yeah, and I think Shopify, that's how I run my website. There's a lot of different website providers out there. I think Shopify is really easy to use. And, you know, there are a lot of YouTube videos that will show you different things, how to set up a basic one or the more advanced, you know, features if you're up to that as well. Um, Just trying to think. Oh, and also, gosh. The other physical tool that has been the biggest game changer for me has been my wax melter. I had a feeling you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so oh, this is so nerdy. I love this conversation. It's great. Um, but it's <laughs> it's a, so I was doing the double boiler method for a long time, wow. and then with my first lot of profit, I bought um, a twenty-seven liter wax melter from Luxury Candle Supplies. You can get them from a lot of different places, but I really trust them. Mm-hmm. Like I've never had an issue with them they've got fast shipping they've got really good customer service so if you ever have a problem you can just call up and say this is what's happened can you help me troubleshoot um and so i think from memory it was about six hundred dollars but it means that i've gone from pouring sort of 10 to 20 candles at a time to hundreds Mm. so physically that is my biggest yeah my best my best advice i think yes (laughs) if you can afford it get one yeah and actually that's the same one that i've got as well (laughs) No, it's yeah, so it's good. So good. It? It's so easy to yeah. use, um, yeah. and it definitely makes the whole process a lot faster. Mm. Is, yeah, if you make one candle, you can make ten. You can make a hundred in one absolutely. go. So why not batch make? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. There's also like a hack um, online about making your own wax melter from like a it's t- it's sort of like a electric crock pot type thing. Yes. So um, if you're handy, you know, you can buy a tap and do it that way. Yes. And I think it brings it down to like 50 to to $100 yeah. because I know that, you know, $600 is out of reach of a lot of people for sure. Yes. Um, so there are ways around it too. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think in America they use the Presto pot. Yeah, Presto yeah, pot. Yeah. Um, I think you can get one similar from Harris Scarf. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. again, like, you know, start off double boiling. Um, make sure that this mm-hmm. is an avenue you want to pursue and then yes. invest in the equipment. Yeah. 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 And there's no point investing in something if you're not going to use it long term for sure. Um, That being said, there is quite good resale value in candle supplies. As you would know, Mm. Um, people, you know, shut down their business or have excess stock or want to do a de-stash. So you can often find things cheaper on the candle sites on Facebook as well. Uh, Sorry, the candle groups um, on Facebook as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's good to know that whatever you do end up buying if you have an excess or if the business doesn't business doesn't quite work out um as you said there's there's quite a good resale value in being able mm-hmm. to um sell those things on to a different or a fellow candle maker absolutely are there any books that you'd recommend like maybe personal development or business books to help a fellow candle maker uh not really to be honest um i'm a big reader but i read for fun mm. yeah. <laughs> so- 
Um, but I tend to, it's more websites that I'll go to, um, blogs, blogs, things like that, that have been useful for me, not books as such. Yeah, no. okay. Yeah. Um, however, sorry, it, on in the book category, um, there is a really good book you can get to record all your testing. So if you're more of a, a person that likes to sort of write things down and keep that as a record rather than like an electronic record, mm. there is a book you can buy that has just pages and pages of, you know, um, fragrance oil percentage, wax type, wick type, did you do a power burn? Like, so all those things are listed out for you so you know what to record yeah. um, and have that as a record for each of your types of candles. So, yeah, I think that was useful for me when I was starting out. Yeah, absolutely, because it's yeah. you end up having notebooks of notes, yeah. paper <laughs> everywhere and some on your phone and yeah. some on the computer. And it's, yeah, it's a place to keep everything annoying in, in one spot. And I don't know about you, but I never record it the same way each time. Yeah. Like... <laughs> No, <laughs> I record, you know, and there's so many details like flame height and the temperature of the vessel and yeah. burn time and like, you know, this, how much smoke or soot was there yeah. and did I trim the wick? And it's just so detailed. Yeah. So I feel like that if you're feeling that real sense of like overwhelm, which is so common, something like that can be really useful. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It keeps everything in one place yeah. and it can keep your mind from, as you say, feeling that overwhelm. Yeah. All right, so we've come to the pointy end of our conversation where I'm going to ask you three questions that all podcast guests on the show um, are asked. So the first one, what is your favourite candle fragrance? So this was really hard. <laughs> I've chosen one that I make and one that someone else makes. Okay, interesting. So my favourite candle fragrance from another candle maker is um, I don't know if you know of the brand Juliet Has a Gun. No. It's a perfume fragrance. I think you can get it on like Adore Beauty, but they have a fragrance called Not a Perfume and it's a single note perfume and it smells different on everyone and it's <gasps> incredible. Wow. So they've actually brought out a candle called Not a Candle. I love that. <laughs> um, and it is absolutely amazing. Um, the other thing is anything by Jo Malone yes. is just, oh, and you can get a lot of those um, imitation fragrance oils as well. Mm -hmm. So that would be my um, favourite fragrances. But the one that I like, that I make at the moment the most, is called Hotel Lobby. And it's about, you know when you walk into like a really luxe hotel, which let me be honest, I've only done about twice yeah. in my life. <laughs> let's imagine um, for and a moment. Right? <laughs> yeah, but let's just, let's just picture this, right? <laughs> we're in the, we're in Hamilton Island. Okay. And, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, so you walk into a hotel lobby and it's that really rich, luxurious smell. So I've got like notes of like um, tobacco leaf, candied citrus, um, a little bit of caramel in there and it's that sort of rich intoxicating fragrance that oh I really love and it's it's a really nice one to have like as a signature scent in your home when you're entertaining yes. as well especially um, when you can make yeah. those um like the really large candles like in the candle bowls yes. they've got you know four or five mm. or six wicks and you get this explosion of scent to have that burning in your home yep. oh love that it's absolutely so and it's one of those ones that you know you don't even have to um, life it's got that beautiful cold throat sorry that was my alarm um you walk past it and you just get those those beautiful notes so yes. i love that as well yeah you're getting more value i think yeah it almost <laughs> makes you afraid to burn the candle because you love the scent yeah, as it right. like, oh, i'll just leave it there exactly. a bit longer. i still feel that and i make them yeah, like, you know, it's funny isn't it <laughs> <laughs> all right so number two uh, what do you love about candles i think we've probably covered most of this yeah. in our chat but yeah, I think, well, I'll just repeat what I said before because it's, you know, it's my favourite thing is it takes you out of your own head and if you're in that incredibly chaotic, stressful time of day, perhaps, you know, putting the kids to bed, just saying, a bit stressful, <laughs> um, it can be just the thing that sort of get, gets you through, um, gives you that little moment to yourself. But I also really like the light of it, particularly that's why I choose amber jars personally because I love that glow as well. Um, a friend of mine does these beautiful ceramic vessels too and they're just gorgeous. But I think I think the fact that it can give you a moment to yourself, that would yes. be my favourite thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the last yeah. question that I want to ask you is what is the one piece of advice for new candle makers at the start of their journey? My advice would be to get insurance. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I think that is um, really important. Not everyone has it, um, but I think that in terms of safety, and for me, safety is the most important thing. Um, you know, you're sending essentially an open flame into someone's house, um, and I think I know that this is a bit boring, but 
it's really important to have insurance mm. in case something happens. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's one that of those would be things. my advice, yeah. Yeah, and it's one of those things that is easily overlooked. Um, when yep. you start on a small business, it's not necessarily something that you think of. We're not given yeah. a checklist of all the things that you need to Absolutely. do. Absolutely. And it's not a sexy part of candle making at all. It's Well, it's it's money <laughs> that you're spending and not getting a return, yeah. but the protection Absolutely. it offers you, yeah. Ha- yeah, how could you not? So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think a lot of advice I've seen on posts with people saying, okay, how do I work out cost price of my candles? So then how do I know how much to mark it up by when I'm selling it? You need to include those um, indirect costs. My husband is very good at this and he set me up a spreadsheet and that type of thing. Amazing. So the indirect costs, <laughs> such as insurance, needs to be on there so that you're factoring it into the, your cost price yes. of your candles. Otherwise it's going to yeah. eat into your profits and you're going to be doing yeah. making all these candles and potentially not making much money from it. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I'm super grateful for all of our um, all of the discussions we've had. I think it's been an incredible chat, and I hope it really benefits the uh, the listeners. Um, speaking of, where can they find you if they want to learn more about you? So, um, connect with me on Instagram. It's at Within the Chaos Candle Co. Um, and the same again on Facebook. That's the best place to find Amazing. Me. And thank you for having me. Yeah, not a problem. And thanks everyone for listening today. I hope this episode added value to your candle making journey. Check out the show notes for all the links mentioned throughout today's episode. And if you would like to submit a question, send me a DM on Instagram at Candle Business Coach. And if you haven't already, download your free copy of my guide, Five Simple Steps to Start Your Candle Journey. It contains tips and advice before you make your first candle and details are in the show notes. Lastly, please subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss any future episodes. And thanks again for listening. Have a beautiful day.